Hey everyone and welcome to my lightning bolt guide video. It goes without saying there are going to be some spoilers in this video both for the lightning bolt class and some item spoilers as well. So please do be aware of that if you're going to go on but I'm guessing you clicked on this video because you'd like to see the guide so that hopefully won't be a problem. If you do enjoy the video please do toss it a like and consider subscribing if you're not already it really helps me out on YouTube and yeah I've got plenty more Gloomhaven content available on my channel below and lots more coming in the future. I also stream regularly on Twitch at twitch.tv slash mandatory quest every Monday, Wednesday and Sunday. Usually playing Gloomhaven, sometimes some other things too. But come hang out and yeah, if you need anything answered, then there's a good place to catch me live. Okay then, without further ado, let's jump into the Lightning Bolt Guide. Okay guys, so a quick introduction to the guide. The Berserker is a character who has sort of like uh, a couple of different ways you can go with her. She has more of a kind of tanky ability uh, that you can go for, like a retaliate kind of shieldy type build that is sort of possible. Um, you also kind of have a couple of different mechanics, both of them really revolving around health. So we have sort of two different types of mechanic. We have, uh, see this first mechanic here, which is Dazing Wound, which is uh, we have to take damage in order to unlock a special effect. So with Dazing Wound, it's a stun. Uh, with Strength and Agony, it's extra damage or extra movement. So this is sort of like one of the mechanics this character has. The other mechanic that this character has and, and cards come up uh, to do with it as well is uh, defiance of death which actually uh, encourages us to be below our health uh, half of our health uh, maximum hit point value and when we do this we get a, a bonus for doing so so encourages us to be at low health um, so these two sort of play off each other quite well because obviously if you are to spend life to power up your attack and then hopefully lower your life to to this uh, so that then you can unlock the the extra kind of like power of uh, of defiance of death and same is true for like the bottom of growing rage as well for example so these are the kind of like the two kind of core mechanics that we're going to be playing around and this build is going to be a build focused mainly around using blood pact so blood pact uh, bottom uh, allows us to add plus one attack to all of our attacks but we do have to take one damage at the start of each of our turns now this is obviously very very strong effects to be able to just permanently add plus one attack uh, for the rest of the scenario however this sort of uh, damage that we take in we can kind of make advantage out of it using things like defiance of death so there's certainly, um, you know, some good reasons why we want to take damage with this character. But you do have to be very careful with this because if you don't have any healers in your party or if you don't have uh, health potions yourself or access to other items that can heal you, then Blood Pact can, you know, get you in a bit of trouble sometimes. So this is kind of a risky build, but I really, really like this build. I think it's a very, very aggressive, uh, very damage-focused build. So if that sounds sort of like your kind of thing, then uh, yeah, you'll probably like this build. Okay, so let's just go through the cards and what they're there for. So first off, we've got Resolute Stand. This is mainly for the initiative and for the move to uh, Retaliate 1-1. One one. Not that we're much of a tank ourselves and we really care about the Retaliate, but really just for the, the movement and the initiative. The uh, top of Resolute Stand is a very interesting effect and can actually uh, do a lot of damage and get you a lot of experience points if you were to draw a times two, if you manage to time it at the right time. Let's say you're on sort of like two health, which means that at level one that's eight difference between you and if you draw your times two that's up to 16 so that would then actually do 16 damage and you would get three experience points rather than just getting that one experience points if you were to draw you know uh, a zero for example so resolute stand very good you want to make sure that you have advantage when you do it uh, growing rage growing rage is a card uh, that is mainly here for the bottom and for a late initiative just sort of like to, to keep us going this character is one that likes to go early a lot so we will be picking up some early initiatives as we level up however um this card is is very good uh bottom for level one if we can manage to consistently get this move three and have our health below half and get the attack two and get the experience points this is just extra damage that we can do really really good being able to attack twice in a turn is is very strong the top of growing rage i'm not a huge fan of i think this encourages you to try and hang on to growing rage for as long as possible don't see this as a card that's like oh you should burn lots of cards uh very very quickly you know you're not a spell weaver you do only have 10 cards so this character does have uh doesn't really have the ability sorry to burn a lot of cards early so still you kind of operate like a normal character in terms of burning cards you're just going to want to look for the best value you can get out of your burns so for example resolute stand you're going to be looking for the best value before you do the top of this um so growing rage i find to be a little bit 
a bit odd. It sort of sort of it kind of maybe would indicate that you want to burn cards when actually I don't think you do. Also, it kind of encourages you to hold on to the card until you know you're when you're towards the end of a scenario and maybe you've only got four or five cards left. You know, it encourages you to hold on to Growing Rage, but I actually think you have much better cards than Growing Rage to hold on to. So Growing Rage top, maybe you might use it, but I'm not a huge fan of it. I don't think it's a great effect. I think that there's you've got better cards. So, uh, but yeah, the bottom of it is very serviceable for level one. So that's what we'll be using it for. Uh, Strength and Agony, this is one of our best cards. So the attack three, you may suffer two damage to add plus two attacks. When attack five and gain one experience point, that is great at level one. You know, that's on par with characters like the Scoundrel, for example. But obviously we got to take a bit of damage, but it's a bit easier to set up. So it allows us to 1v1 enemies very easily, which is great. And also the bottom is incredibly strong as well. And this is one of the main reasons why we'll be keeping this card for a very long time is um, you may suffer up to three damage and we can do move four plus x where x is the amount of damage so we can move up to seven and then if we were to use boots then we can uh you know move even more so yeah this is just a huge amount of movement and will make your positioning much easier for you and also importantly it allows you to be able to lower your health for something like the next card we're going to look at defiance of death you know if you are say hanging around on you know something awkward like i'm hanging around on five health at level one and you really want to be at four because you want to be below half and that brings us on to defiance of death which is attack three add plus two attack and gain one xp if our current hit point value is less than half our maximum hit point value round it up and that brings us nicely on to defiance of death which is attack three add plus two attack and gain one xp if your current hit point value is less than half your maximum hit point value so gives us some benefit this is very good because obviously we can we can lower our hp here and then we can we can use this very strong you do have to be very careful though obviously if you're going to be operating under your uh, half hit point value the way that i see this build is more of a more of a hybrid build where you're probably going to be going up and down you know above this half threshold fairly regularly depending on your party comp you just want to be able to time this at the right time really so this character i see is a is a timing character as well as like a, a management character in terms of your resources so you know your resources really are your hit points your cards and you know your fire element as well which we'll get into but essentially it's really your hit points so just keep on top of that and uh and yeah play this at the right time and you get really really good benefit for it the bottom is that on the next three sources of damage to you that would reduce you to less than one hit point you suffer no damage instead so this is um you know a bit of a niche situation that you may want to use this i think you may bring this out towards the end of a scenario just to get you through you know if there's a certain survive x amount of rounds type scenario perhaps this might this the bottom of this might come into play a little bit but i i don't think um it's particularly great i mean it, it is very corner case importantly the blood pact could actually trigger this so you know towards the end of a scenario if you've just got you know no enemies to kill and, you, and your friends are running around looting and stuff like that, or if you've got plenty of time then you know you can kind of like play blood pact and blood pact will try and tick you below one health which will then trigger defiance of death bottom so there is a few ways you can artificially trigger this yourself as well as obviously using like strength and agony for example to try and trigger it so importantly though this the damage from this is all in one go so you can't like go okay i want to suffer three lots of one no it, it doesn't work like that this is just like every instance so you have to say how much it's going to be so the next card we have is from the brink so we're bringing this mainly for the bottom movement and the initiative is also you know fairly nice uh move three push one target one adjacent enemy quite often we won't be using the push because we want enemies close to us however this does give us some sort of interaction with traps or obstacles um or uh, sort of like you know hazardous difficult terrain things like that gives us a little bit more uh, to play with the top however is something that we are going to hang on to and we are probably going to play at the right time for this character so this is heal x range two where x is the difference between our maximum hit point value and our current hit point value so basically what this does is, is it gives us a full heal it tops us up to full health and this scales with the levels as well so because it's not a, a heal value it is just the difference you know tops us up to full this uh, card actually this is a scaling heal that scales all the way up to level nine when you are at, uh, at your max health with this character uh, you know say for example you use resolute stand to get that maximum sort of damage that you wanted to do then you could always play something like from the brink afterwards to try and heal yourself up so yeah it's a role player in this but you're mainly going to be using it for the bottom most of the time that brings us to blood pact which is sort of like the the feature card if you like 
in this build. So the top of blood pack it is attack six, suffer damage equal to half of our current hit point value rounded up. So this is quite a good attack actually. If you have the ability and you can find the timing to be at low health fairly consistently. I do think hanging around at low health is always very tricky, especially against certain enemies that have like target twos and things like that. Like if you're against living bones and they just like, oh, I'm gonna, you know, we're gonna attack everything. It can become very hard for you to, um, to not take a little bit of damage here and there. So hanging around like on two health, for example, is just is not good um also you know you wouldn't be able to play this when you're at one health so yeah it's it's not great we're going to be using it in this build solely for the uh bottom which is add plus one attack to all of our attacks suffer one damage at the start of each of our turns so this is like this is an incredibly powerful effect being able to add an extra plus one damage but we do have quite a, quite a consistent like a considerable setback here which is suffering the one damage that's quite a considerable negative um certainly it plays into our strategy of trying to get below half health for some of our other cards like defiance of death and growing rage and we can um yeah i mean if you've got a healer in your party i will say that this character works incredibly well if you have a support character in your party another another healer because that kind of just you know if you've got a healer who can can who can just reliably heal you for three something like that like fairly regularly even tinkerer's bottom restorative mist which is just moved to you know heal one all adjacent allies that card can actually just you know just the fact that it's offsetting blood pact can have quite a decent uh impact yeah we're going to be going all in on blood pact here but certainly this is a very aggressive strategy and if you don't have a healer in your party you actually might want to not play uh blood pack bottom or at least not play blood pack bottom immediately you may want to kind of keep it in your hand for a little while play it halfway through a scenario rather than uh, in the opening of the scenario next up we've got cauterize cauterize attack one range three target two wound make fire this is just a, a really um well kind of costed early attack attack one is obviously nothing you know to write home about but you do have an incredibly strong attack modifier deck so once we start to get better you know these attack ones can actually start looking more like you know attack three and stuff like that so i think um this certainly scales pretty well uh range three target two obviously target two is is great wound is some guaranteed damage Wound is a very good effect what we like and the other really good thing that this card does is it makes fire so we do have some use of this fire element as well with another card coming up so yeah cauterize top very good uh the bottom is the next four times you are healed add plus two heal i don't think you ever want to play the bottom of this card there may be some situation when you are you know really in a lot of trouble towards the end of a scenario maybe and you just need to get up to full health and you don't have something like from the brink anymore um you know things really go sideways for you but but i think you probably want to try and steer clear of that cauterized top is is really where it's at next up we have dazing wound which is attack three and then we may suffer two damage to add stun and gain one experience point straight up very strong stun is a very good effect taking the two damage is obviously a bit negative but i think that that is a suitable kind of cost for having an attack three and a stun at level one because that would be very strong if you didn't have that um so yeah uh, amazing so really really good uh the bottom of this is move four just solid just solid move four is a, a great amount of movement but we're probably going to be using it for the top most of the time a good all-round card this one um the other card we're taking is bounce back so bounce back is the top is retaliate to self ignore that we don't really care about it the main thing we're using this card for is the initiative and using the move three heal oneself so this is a way that we can uh, mitigate some of that blood pack damage so once per round essentially we can uh, mitigate the effects of blood pact and also you know both blood pact and resolute stand have some enhancement opportunities which we'll talk about later which make them very very strong as well um unbridled power this is attack two stun and then if we use the fire we get plus two attack so this could be an attack four and stun if we use it after cauterize which is absolutely what you want to be doing the bottom of this is a lot of text and a lot of text that i think you can ignore um you may overheal to a maximum of 26 hit points but your maximum hit point value remains the same for the purpose of all ability effects heal three self so the purposes of this is to uh kind of give you a build where instead of you trying to be below half health you're going to be using a build where you just constantly spend uh hp to do things that's sort of like the rough idea around the bottom of this card the rough idea is that you know you get yourself to a really really high hit point value and then you don't really care about spending hit points to unhealth 
to to do extra damage and effects and things like that however in principle getting to this 26 hit points is really bad because of this clause in here which says but your maximum hit point value remains the same for the purpose of all ability effects so that means that any cards that we have that care about what our maximum hit point value is they just only care what our level you know hit point value is so for example from the brink now you know doesn't heal us up to unfortunately an extra 26 it doesn't it only heals us up to the maximum which is 10 at level one so this i i don't really understand i mean i i assume that it was because it would be incredibly broken but this line of text basically just makes this this ability completely unplayable so um yeah you won't be using it for that Let's go through the three cards that we uh, won't be taking, uh, but I do think that there is some sideboard use potentially for some of them. So we've got Furious Aid here, which is just a loot two on the top, one XP. Uh, it's a burn. It's I mean, this is pretty much as good as a loot card can get, and you may get certain scenarios where you need to bring loot cards. And this is, yeah, as good as a loot card can really get because it's on the top, so you can at least move into a position to make sure that you maximize your loot. But I don't really think it's something that you, you care about. The bottom is heal three, range three. You are not a support character, so the range three part is kind of irrelevant, mostly. Uh, you're really going to be you know, using this to heal yourself um i i think that you can uh, you can play better than that i think you can use health pots that in order to heal and i think that you well hopefully you have some sort of support character in your party as well that can help healing you somewhat as well you can long rest you know there are things you can do you can always just discard blood pact if it was going to kill you or if, it, if you feel like you're taking too much damage you can just discard blood pack from your active area to get rid of it so yeah, I don't, I don't think you really care about healing. So Furious Aid, very, very situational sideboard card. Um, Glass Hammer is another situational one. I think you'd probably bring Glass Hammer in for boss fights, potentially. So what Glass Hammer allows you to do is basically the reverse of Resolute Stand. So it allows you to do damage, what is your current hit point value, all the way down. So yeah, very, very good. It can be, uh, can be great. Glass Hammer does actually combo with Unbridled Power, but it's a hell of a lot of investment to try and get this to work. I think um, Glass Hammer also gets much stronger the higher levels you are. So once you are, um, you know, like level nine, bringing in Glass Hammer for a, for a boss, Glass Hammer can do a crazy amount of damage because you're like 26 health. I don't think Glass Hammer is something that you really want to bring in regularly. But as a uh, as a sideboard card, it's uh, it's fine. Uh, then you've got Numb the Pain, reasonable sideboard card here. The top of Numb the Pain is just pretty bad in my opinion. The attack three, you may suffer two damage to gain shield one. Well, that means that you would need to be attacked by a minimum of three enemies in order for this to be to pay off, right? If I'm going to take two damage and I'm going to shield one, shielding one would prevent one damage from a source that I would take that means I would need to be attacked by three enemies in order for this to have paid off it just feels very bad to me I mean I, I don't see why this couldn't have just been like shield two it just seems very weak to me uh for a top attack uh you know or at least make it like an attack four maybe and then it would be uh maybe a bit more playable but yeah just just not really usable I don't think the bottom is is much much better though move three we can suffer two damage to stun one adjacent enemy yeah this character has access to three stuns at level one <laughs> that's pretty nuts this i think only just doesn't quite make the cut just because we can't really afford to have um too many cards that cost us hp if we're going to be really hurting ourselves every single time we can't afford to drain our health every single round because you know you take one hit and then suddenly you are you're screwed so i don't think we really want to be doing that so none the pain i think uh this is, is again a fine sideboard card i think you may want to bring it into certain scenarios and if once you level up a little bit you get a little bit more hp perhaps you know you get some better items you get some more health pots you can maybe start to experiment with this card a little bit more but a level one no that's not what we want okay so here are all of our starting cards on the screen but what i've also done for you here is i've given you an example of the turn order and how we're going to play this turn it's quite like a combo kind of related character people seem to enjoy this from my triangles guide so i thought i'd implement another one here so this gives you a rough example of what your first sort of five turns are going to be which gets you to your first long rest gives you an idea of like what maybe an ideal 
opening five turns of this character might look like. The first turn, we're going to use Blood Pact. Um, so it's going to take uh, one point of damage uh, to us for the beginning of our next rounds. We're going to get that plus one attack. And then we're going immediately going to use Cauterize to get that benefit. So we're going to do an attack two, target two, and wound, and make fire, which is important. We're doing a lot of damage already, which is great. Uh, on to turn two. On turn two, we're going to drop HP. We're now at nine HP at the beginning of the turn because of the Blood Pact. We're going to move two and do the retaliate probably on resolute stands. You're really using this for the initiative uh, mostly. Uh, and the move two, you know, is just, yeah, just enables you a little bit. And then you've got the unbridled power, which you're going to use. So you're going to use that fire to get an extra plus two attack. So you can do an attack of four with stun. Uh, very strong. Take something out of the fight. That's what you want to be trying to do. Then on turn three, you're going to drop another HP because of the, uh, the blood pack. So you're down to eight. Now, this is HP we can actually regain on this turn. So what we're going to do is we're going to use uh, the bottom of bounce back to move three and heal one. And then we're actually going to take some damage ourselves. We're going to use Dazing Wound here to, to actually uh, take two damage to do another stun. Now, this might be the same target as you did for the, the first stun, depending. Hopefully that thing's dead. Um, so, yeah essentially you're going to be attacking for four here because of the blood pack so blood packs just amping up everything that we do at the beginning of the next turn uh we're then going to use uh from the brink so move three push one i mean that's you know fine you may want to use the push you may not and we're going to actually use the top of strength and agony here so we're going to pay the two damage here to get an extra plus two attack now this is quite you know risky we're, we're taking quite a bit of damage here we're not healing so not only are we taking a point from blood pack we've actually taken uh, you know, two points here from, from Strength and Agony. But the good thing with this is that on our next turn, that means that we actually start our turn on four HP because we, we we ended our turn on five. We take the Blood Pack damage. We go down to four HP, which importantly is below half. So that allows us and activates both our Defiance of Death card and our Growing Rage card. So we can then go Defiance of Death top, which is attack three plus two and gain the XP because we're going to be below half plus an extra one from Blood Pact. We're going to be attacking for six. That's pretty good. Uh, and then using the bottom of Growing Rage to be able to move three and get the attack two, which is now an attack three because of Blood Pact and gain that extra experience points. So you can see that this character has an amazing amount of damage potential and Blood Pact is just, oh, I mean, it's just incredible. Like you, this is the first round of play and, and you would absolutely be you know, happy with the value that Blood Pact has given you. The Blood Pact has already given you, you know, a crazy amount of value, you know. So if you were to just discard it now because you're like, right, I'm done with Blood Pact. I think it's, you know, I can't take the risk anymore. You've already got so much value out of it. So, uh, yeah, it, it, it's really excellent. So that means that you're going to start your next turn at 3 HP with no cards in hand. So it's up to you at this point in time whether or not you want a long rest, short rest, do whatever it is that you need to do. Some of the most important items you're going to need to have are healing potions or have support characters who are nearby and can heal you. That is very important because obviously starting your 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 turn at 3 HP, if you were to then short rest and go into things, you're going to get yourself into some trouble. You could short rest here and then use Defiance of Death and Growing Rage again, then do the top of From the Brink, for example, and, and, and heal yourself up before. Remember, you need to be very careful about what your health is because if you end your turn on 1 HP with Blood Pact active, you need to remember to discard that card before it comes around to your turn again in digital at the moment there is no step that allows you to do this blood pack will just automatically trigger you can discard it during other players turns you just need to make sure that you're on top of it and if you do need to discard it make sure that you discard it okay great so let's go into our level ups so level two so at level two, we have two cards. We have Reckless Offensive, which is you may suffer up to three damage to attack for target X, where X is the amount of damage you suffered. Uh, quite an interesting effect here. Obviously, if you were to be able to target two things for four, you'd be very, very happy, I think. The problem that I have with this card is that you have to take one damage just to target anything. So the minimum amount of damage that you that you have to do to yourself is one for, for this to even activate. Taking one damage for an attack of four, you know, with Blood Pact as well, we have to be very careful, as you've just seen with the demonstration with the turn order. Even in your first round, you're already down to three. Being able to spend, you know, if you were to spend two, two to do Reckless Offensive, for example, then you're in a bit of trouble. You'd have to substitute out some of our other cards, and I think our other cards are very, very good at what they do. I'm not uh, completely sold on it. I think it's maybe a bit too much self-harm for this particular build. Uh, the bottom is all uh, melee attacks targeting you. Add plus one attack, retaliate to self. This is... Um, 
damn right awful um i don't think you i don't think you really want this at all you know if you were to go for the overheal tank build with this character potentially i guess this could be okay but wow it's it's very all in let's say the good thing is that it doesn't really give you know ranged attackers any additional attack against you so you kind of guarantee that the attack is going to trigger the retaliate which is nice at least but i think this is a very dangerous card and unless you are building around this kind of effect and you are really going all in on this kind of effect i don't think you want to just be like casually oh i'll just casually play the bottom of reckless offensive absolutely not this is like a build around me type card um so not for us the bottom at all and as i said i don't think the top is particularly great so break the chains break the chains is an attack two range three target two pull two so this should be quite exciting for us because blood pack gives us plus one attack on all of our attacks so multiple target attacks are very good for a blood pack build because we're going to be getting you know double bonus essentially so break the chains really to us reads as attack three range three target two pull two which i think is excellent you absolutely love a card like that especially at level two as a non-burn that's uh that's very strong the bottom is move three and we can add plus two move if we have fewer hit points than half of our maximum hit point value we could also spend fire to add an additional two move and get one xp not something that we're really aiming to do because we are often using the fire from cauterize with unbridled power you know we're not doing anything other than that but that does give you some use of it uh potentially in a scenario where maybe it gets flame demons or something like that or if you really do need to move around and you you know do cauterize and then you can maybe do the bottom of break the chains to get through a scenario a bit quicker so I think it's fine the top of break the chains is excellent it is definitely what we want to be taking so we're going to be taking break the chains here okay so the card we're going to be getting rid of here well there's a choice between two cards we can really drop from the rotation here i'm going to be dropping the card from the brink the reason is is that mainly we're going to be using this as just a move three push one the top heel is obviously very good and does scale so this card will remain probably a fairly decent sideboard card depending on some scenarios for you i do quite like this character for the different sideboard actions and, and things that she gets i don't think that you necessarily want to just you know discard this and forget about from the brink forever but if i'm playing with a support character which generally speaking i think it's if you're playing in a four person party hopefully one person is playing some kind of support character with some heals then i think you can actually just say chuck me a heal every now and again please and you don't need to worry about having a card that you need to burn just to get all the way up to your max hit points again for me i just uh, i'm gonna get rid of from the brink because i like to run support characters when i play um like a character like this and generally speaking if you're playing in like four or three i think you probably should have some kind of supportish type character in the mix for you uh, if not you could always get rid of something like growing rage instead because i don't really like the top of growing rage and the bottom is good but it's not you know an amazing thing to write home about i think you you could sacrifice a bit of damage for for heal potentially for this particular build i'm going to be getting rid, rid of from the brink and we're bringing in break the chains because we are going all in and we're being nice and greedy on to level three so at level three, we have spiked armor and we have fatal fury. So spiked armor, the top says, increase the value of each of your retaliate abilities by two this round. Quite an interesting effect and um, certainly a combo piece and can work very well with some other unlockable characters. Uh, we won't get into that too much, but this is certainly, if you're going for the overheal, I'm going to retaliate a lot build. And if, for example, you actually did take the bottom of Reckless Offensive, for example, this suddenly becomes quite good. Burn the bottom of this and then use Spike Dharma top. Seems quite strong. So some kind of fun alternative build potential with the top of Spike Armor here. Uh, also does combo a little bit with the bottom of resolute stand it's not huge but giving you retaliate three is not terrible uh however the bottom of this card is really where it's at in my opinion which is move to attack to target all adjacent enemies just amazing if you think that we've got blood packed and that's what we're going to be doing so this is basically attack three all adjacent enemies that just suddenly becomes like wow and we can uh combo this with another attack so we can actually attack just a crazy amount of things in a turn this character the damage output potential is huge i absolutely love the bottom of spiked armor also the 16 initiative is just a, a slam dunk it's something that we're looking for so having it on an early initiative as well lovely so yeah spiked armor we are we very much like this card but 
but we will talk about Fatal Fury as well because I think it's worth talking about. So Fatal Fury is kill one adjacent normal enemy whose current hit point value is less than half the difference between your maximum hit point value and your current hit point value. That is a lot of text and I have to reread it every time I play Fatal Fury. So I've actually played quite a bit of Fatal Fury. I, I think on balance, it's not a bad card by any means. The problem with Fatal Fury top is that at level three, you know, you've only got, I think it's 14 health. That's not a huge amount of health. That means that you're not going to be able to kill anything that is very, very um, like high hit point value. You know, you, you're, ba you're basically going to be killing things with hit point values of four, three and four, which you have plenty of attacks to do an attack five. So really the only use for this is against high shield low health enemies things like living spirits or imps potentially so there is some some good sideboard use for it but this card does scale quite well up into the late game because obviously the higher your health goes the different the bigger that this difference can become so fatal fury is an interesting card it's kind of like hey i'm not very good right now but if you invest in me then hey, when you're level nine, I'm going to be like really, really good. Enemies health does still go up as well, but just being able to like guarantee like quite a big attack, importantly, without doing an attack. So you avoid retaliate and things like that is just really good. It makes the fire element as well, which is a nice bonus one XP. So Fail Fury is a bit of a hard card to evaluate because at level three, it's not great top level nine it can be quite good so there may be some situation where you want to come back and take fatal fury and maybe we will end up coming back and taking fatal fury at a later point uh the bottom is attack two move one attack two which i think is actually very solid and one of the reasons why i ended up running fatal fury because i thought well the bottom of this card is good enough to potentially see you through the, the tough times before the top becomes good right you can kind of like go well the bottom is strong so i can keep using the bottom and then eventually once i get a few more levels the tops will come into its own and become become very good especially with blood pack build again we're going to be doing attack three move one attack three it's very good that we could either do six damage to one target or we could split the attacks if we needed to we can use boots with the move one to do a, a little bit more movement as well if we need to so i think that fatal fury is is on it's actually a pretty decent card it's just a shame that it's against spiked armor because spiked armor just the move to attack two that's gonna be attack three potentially let's say you know three targets this is going to be doing nine damage and the 16 initiative is so important on a character like this being able to go early is super important because you want to stun things early you want to do your damage you want to try and kill things before they get a chance to act so we're going to be taking spiked armor here so the card we're going to be taking out here is going to be taking out the other card that we kind of talked uh, about last time, which is Growing Rage, purely because this is just a straight up upgrade really on Growing Rage. Growing Rage requires us to be fewer than half of our hit points for the attack. It does get you an experience point, so you may end up missing an extra experience point because of this. However, I just think it's it's such, it's such a strict upgrade. It's better initiative. It's got a, an unconditional attack on the bottom, which is excellent, exactly what you want, and it can attack multiple things. So it's a pretty simple swap here. So, so we get rid of Growing Rage and we get Spiked Armor. Okay, on to level four. So at level four, we get Flurry of Axes and we get Shiny Distraction. So Flurry of Axes is a card after my own heart. I am a huge Crackheart fan. Crackheart is my favorite character and my favorite Crackheart card is Unstable Upheaval. And this is basically like, hey, I am a better Unstable Upheaval. So use me. The only difference being that you can't, this is a ranged attack, so you can't combo this with Warhammer, unfortunately, which you know will be broken but the amount of damage that this can do is just crazy anyway and you can actually pair this with piercing bow which could actually be better in certain situations so i actually really really like flurry of axes it, it's exactly the kind of effect in gloomhaven that i like to play i love to play big splashy effects you run into a room make sure you're strengthened make sure you've been blessed all of that kind of good stuff and you just run into a room and you just go do you know what guys i'm gonna burn all of my i'm gonna burn my boots i'm gonna you know i'm using my boots i'm using all of my power potions i'm using everything guys i'm going all in i'm using all of my items bang and then you just level a room and it completely changes the tables it flips them completely in your favor you know you just do such a huge amount of damage that it just wipes things now that does lead to a very inconsistent way of playing some will argue trying to to play that because there'll also be the situations when you go into a room perhaps you don't have strength and or perhaps the, situ the scenario doesn't really play very well into a flurry of axes perhaps you have, don't have that many enemies for example if you're playing in a two-player 
um, scenario. I actually think Flurry of Axes is probably not very good because you're going to have so many less enemies on the board that Flurry of Axes just may, may end up only being like target two, for example, which is which is pretty bad. You don't want to be burning a card to attack two things for four. That's really not very good. So uh, yeah, don't... Um, you, I can absolutely see a situation in which if you're playing two player that you would not necessarily want Flurry of Axes here but I absolutely love it I play with a minimum of three sometimes four and I think Flurry of Axes is just great when you've got lots of enemies to deal with just yeah it, it's just so much fun to play with so that's Flurry of Axes and the bottom move five is just very usable until you find the situation to play Flurry of Axes it's a great amount of movement so you're very very happy so the other card we've got is Shiny Distraction Shiny Distraction is an interesting card so it's loot one shield one on the top kind of weird because like i don't really understand why loot is on this card because with looting you would always kind of want to loot late unless let's say that like you know the vermilings were were looting or something like that on their turn it, it's very weird in an ideal situation you want to loot late because everyone has acted maybe some people have died especially as this is building into the sort of shield retaliate build so you would want to shield up retaliate they would kill kill themselves on the retaliate and then you would loot afterwards so i don't really understand why loot was put on this card other from maybe a thematic perspective really you're playing this for the initiative and for the shield one if you're playing a tank build with this character the bottom of this is gain advantage on all of your attacks this round all attacks targeting you gain disadvantage this this round this is actually like a pretty decent effect especially you know because we've got some good multi-target attacks break the chains and cauterize so getting advantage on those attacks is quite nice you probably want to use it with break the chains because you're going to be make, double making fire if you were to use it with quarter ice. But the, the problem that I kind of have with this, the bottom of shiny distraction, is that, as you know, we just picked up spiked armor, which is a move to attack to on the bottom. So we would be required to kind of give up one of our attacks in order to get this. And actually, some of the enhancements we're going to be looking at is we're going to be looking at adding strength and so resolute stand and, you know, bounce back. Oh, bounce back for sure. Resolute stand is an additional extra possibly if you've got the money but i would recommend mainly bounce back and and essentially you aren't going to need this advantage you know if you're playing well you can definitely sequence your turns in a way that you can be strengthened most of the time just by using the bottom of your cards or perhaps other support abilities that people have so shiny distraction i think is a distraction <laughs> and I, I don't think it's it's what we want and we definitely want flurry of axes because we're all about doing damage and big splashy things with our berserker build so we're taking flurry of axes also imagine you targeting five things with this and with blood pack that's an additional five damage through blood packed i mean come on that's what's not not to, what's not uh to like there so the card we're going to be getting rid of here is it's a little bit of a controversial one it's a little bit of a difficult one um to get rid of uh but it's going to be dazing wound mainly because flurry of axes uh, bottom is just a strict upgrade on the move for bottom of dazing wound we will miss this stun and i think the thing is is that stuns are just very very good in the game and you're getting rid of stuns always hurts because you're going to definitely immediately feel the effect and especially considering that we're going to be taking out a card which is fairly reliable like a consistent damage dealer for us and this is a consistent role player so far for a card that actually we're only going to burn in the right situation however i would argue that you don't necessarily need as many stuns if for example your plan is to open a door go in level the entire room with flurry of axes i think you don't necessarily need to worry about stunning things as much uh, once you do a lot of damage to things you can then just like finish them off with with attacks and stuff so stun starts to lose a little bit of value but this is definitely a bit of a risky play and again I feel like this card's quite a good sideboard uh, option for certain scenarios and certain things you're going to want to do. So you want to keep this still uh, in the back of your mind at some point. But for us, we're going to be getting rid of Dazing Wound and we're going to be uh, picking up Flurry of Axes. Okay, on to level five. So at level five, we have Seeing Red and we have Final Fight. Uh, let's talk about Seeing Red first. So Seeing Red is attack four, but we gain shield one and one experience points if you have fewer hit points than half of your maximum hit point value. So you know how we had a card that did this at level one and we didn't really want it? Well, guess what? We still don't want it. It's just the suffering the two damage is obviously much worse than this because this will just trigger if we have fewer hit points. But if you're fewer than half your hit points, shield one 
It may get you out of a little bit of trouble, but shield one is like nothing. It's really not a lot, especially if you play on plus difficulty levels, which I encourage people to do. I think it encourages better play. Even if you're playing just, you know, you're a fairly new player. I think once you get comfortable, you should probably just be on plus one at least because it, it does make the game uh, a little bit trickier, but just more thinky. It means that it rewards you for, for planning a bit more. So just, yeah, I just really, oh, this is just a bit of a a bit of a naff top to be honest not something that we're really interested in if you're playing the tanking build maybe but then the thing with the tanking build is you want to overheal and have a crazy amount of health so i i don't know like it's uh yeah i i, I don't really understand the place for, for the top of seeing red uh the bottom is add plus one attack to all of our attacks when you have fewer hit points than half of your maximum hit point value rounded up well this is a little bit more exciting because this will essentially give us like an extra blood pact but it's a blood pact that doesn't do damage to us right so immediately you think wow this could be really good we could have two kind of effects to give us extra plus one attack it's really playing into what our strategy is well no <laughs> the problem that with that with the bottom of this is the fact that it only activates and we have half of our maximum hit points which means that let's say half of the scenario we're not going to get any benefit from it so we're only getting a benefit from it maybe 50 percent of the time maybe less depending on uh, on how efficient your healer is and, and how efficient you are with managing your health points so really it's uh it's only about half half the time so it's half the time it's as good as blood pact and the other really big thing to consider here is it's another burn and we only have 10 cards so if we're burning blood pact that's you know basically we're down to nine for the entire scenario and we have a couple of other big burns that we want to burn at certain situations you know flurry of axes we definitely want to find a perfect situation to burn that we're not that flush with cards here so i don't think that this character can really afford to have two active abilities going we're not a spell weaver we don't have any ways of getting these cards cards back yeah I, I actually feel like um that this card in general is quite bad i think it's a bit of a trap i would steer clear of seeing red i think it is a, a nod to the specific build where you just want to try and keep yourself constantly fewer than half your hit points but i find that to be very very tricky to do and very dangerous to do not very um not a very good way of playing the game. I think you'll, you'll end up getting yourself into trouble quite a lot and probably getting quite frustrated so uh, i i don't really recommend seeing red the other card we have next to it is uh is final fight which is probably one of the most interesting cards that's uh that you can find in gloomhaven so this says kill one adjacent normal or elite enemy you immediately become exhausted that's right you just immediately exhaust and you are out of the scenario and that's how that works um you get three experience points though um yeah that top is very obviously very very situational importantly it doesn't kill bosses so don't think oh wow maybe i'll take this and just kill a boss because a boss is neither a normal or elite enemy bosses are bosses so you can't you can't kill uh, a boss with it so the best sort of situation that i see for final fight is that you you're like oh we're probably going to lose the scenario guys you run into your last room you go oh well let's just check out the last room anyway and there's like one elite in there and you're like wait if i kill the elite then perhaps like we've got a couple of turns perhaps my team can finish off the rest it's either that or it's like i specifically just want to try and get three three free experience points Try saying that quickly. Three free experience points um per scenario essentially by just at the end of the scenario bang which okay but is it really worth investing a pick on just getting three experience points and a slot in your your hand which is very it's very very tight i find this character very hard to balance the cards actually compared to some other ones it's a very simple like this in this out this in this out this character is actually quite difficult to decide that because of the sideboard choices and other things you have available like all of the cards like a lot of the starting cards are very good on this character so it, it can be quite difficult so yeah um hmm. so let's just say that maybe we could use it so that would mean that the bottom would have to be usable right the bottom would have to be something we're excited about to play all of the time until the top becomes like relevant and uh, it says move x where x is the number of cards you have burnt hmm. okay well uh that doesn't do anything for a long time i mean it's a move one because we burn blood pack very early but that's about it you know maybe a move two great it's now just operating as a move two but it does have um you can consume fire to do an attack three um yeah so i mean we're not trying to set this up in any way um also it's important to note that did we not just see a card that was strictly better than that 
um, in pretty much every way. Um, so Fatal Fury does the kill effect uh, only on a normal enemy, granted, not an elite, so that is worth considering. And also, obviously, we have to lower their health probably first. But it does give us that kind of kill effect. It's not a burn. Uh, it generates fire, which is just useful. But the bottom is is way more usable than the bottom of Final Fight. Uh, attack 2, move 1, attack 2. I mean, yes, it's only a move 1, which is kind of like the same as this. But just having 1, attack 3, you know, which will be an attack 4 with Blood Pact versus 2, attack 3s. You know, this is 6 damage versus potentially 4 damage. So I think that Fatal Fury is by far a better card than Final Fight. To be honest, at this point in time, this character starts to become kind of less... The, the card choices tend to get kind of less fun with this character, in my opinion. I think that level four was our best, like, level up decision um, on this character. From level five onwards, um, it becomes a little bit more kind of like, we just get better and better and better and better. Like, we just basically take upgrades, upgrades, upgrades. And there's no, like, interesting card that comes along that says... This is a new way to play this character or this is your, your cornerstone card i think that we actually this is one of the only characters that, that the cornerstone cards are kind of like the beginning cards which is interesting most of the other characters kind of get like little hints at what they can do at level one and then once they get maybe to level four level five that's when they unlock their kind of cornerstone card this is the card you want to play regularly this is the card that you play and you plan your turn around i don't think this character really has that at any point i think that that happens level four is kind of like the best decision that we get we get sort of fun card in flurry of axes um and from this point onwards we just get solid upgrade good damage cards but unfortunately neither of these two cards are it and actually to be honest this is a situation where i would suggest let's go back and get fatal fury because now we're level five the top's going to be a bit more relevant and the bottom is just strictly better than anything else that we have and also just doing more damage is good so having an attack on the bottom will allow us to nuke something down very quickly so we're actually going to go back and we're going to take fatal fury here i could also see an argument for maybe actually taking shiny distraction instead if you want the early initiative and you wanted to gain the advantage this could be quite good if you don't have a lot of gold so if you don't have a lot of gold to get advantage regularly uh, by enhancing so enhancing strengthen on bounce back or resolute stand I, I could absolutely see a reason as to why you'd want to go back and get shiny distraction but for us we're going to take fatal fury here so the card we're actually going to take off is a card that is um you know very strong and very dear to us we're actually going to be dropping defiance of death here the reason being is that this is attack of three plus two so it's an attack of five maybe six with blood pact that's kind of like the best case scenario with defiance of death uh now the bottom is something that as i said you don't really want to be playing you only want to be playing if you get yourself into a lot of trouble obviously this is much better in boss situations so again i think that this is shouldn't be completely out of your mind this may be a card that you bring in for bosses in particular. Um, but yeah, having Fatal Fury is is very interesting. And also we now got a more versatile card because the bottom is something that we're also very excited to do too. So being the attack two, move one, attack two. So pretty simple choice here. But yeah, like I said, with this character, you just you need to think about these sideboard options because this could change um, fairly regularly. Okay, let's go to level six. So at level six, we have Devil Horns and we have Unstoppable Destruction. So Devil Horns is attack three, wound, make fire, and it's a little three hex pattern, like a, a slightly better leaping cleave um, if you've ever played the Brute. So yeah, this is an incredibly good attack. Um, again, it's nine damage. Remember, with Blood Pack, this is actually going to be an attack four. So this is the way you need to, you know, every sort of value should be increased by one, really, most of the time. Wound as well is a guaranteed point of damage if you can go early enough. So yeah, Devil Horns just yeah super super good. Really like this attack. I think it's great. The bottom is attack four. Just get one XP, and you're probably not going to be playing it for the bottom very much. But certainly in like a boss situation or a situation where you just need to kill an elite very quickly or something, and you just want to do a double attack. Attack four does it for you. So Devil Horns just all in all a very uh, aggressively costed card and um, the next card we have is unstoppable destruction which is attack four and then we may suffer two damage to ignore the target's shield value and gain one xp now this is an interesting effect i actually quite like this effect i think this is a fun effect i just really wish that this was an x card maybe make it like an attack three or an attack two and make this an x value card because 
This just screams sideboard. It just absolutely screams a sideboard card. It Like, for a sideboard card, this is, like, absolutely everything that you want. Certain scenarios, this is going to do absolutely nothing. Is this going to be an attack four or five with blood pack? Really, you don't want to be taking a card just for that. You know, you want to be taking a card uh, for, you know, the added value, which is this being able to ignore the target shield. Now, as you do level up, things do start to just random things start to get shield so there is definitely some more use to this uh later on in the game i think like archers just suddenly start getting shield and and what have you like it it, it can um it can get a bit crazy especially if you're playing on plus two and plus four things just have lots of shield i think there is some corner case use for the top of this i just really wish that it was an uh, like an x card or something because i think Maybe it would be too strong. I don't know. To play, like, maybe it would be too too good if we had access to it at level one. I don't know. But that's my general feeling, is that it is just a, a an amazing sideboard. And the bottom of this is that if you short rest during your next turn, you actually gain all of the benefits for a long rest. So this would be getting your two HP back. This would be getting to choose the card that you, um, that you lose. And also it would refresh any of your tapped items. So boots, armor, stuff like that. And this character can can uh, wear armor because they have the, the special perk to ignore the negative effects so i mean that's kind of an interesting effect also there are some there are some very strong melee items as well that you could refresh using this things like spears and stuff like that they can be they can be very good for me i i just find that this is just yeah a little bit too situational a little bit too i i i don't think that you're gonna like just long rest <laughs> and, and especially if you're playing the tabletop version as well and you're playing battle goals and stuff like that sometimes it's going to be like only take long rests in a scenario and you've got a card in your deck that's like helps you take short rests like uh, uh, like i don't know i just i just don't um i i just think that it's a bit situational yes absolutely you can break it and do um, do really good things with it however i don't think it's probably worth passing up you know a card like devil horns to have an effect like this is it I, I i just wish this card was a sideboard x level card maybe slightly nerfed or something i don't know maybe the bottom wouldn't be able to be on this card i'm not sure but yeah that's my general feeling so we're going to be taking devil horns here so the card we're actually going to be getting rid of is we're going to be getting rid of cauterize here so for two reasons really the first reason being that that uh, this gives us the the fire that we've been obviously using with unbridled power and we're still using with unbridled power because being able to attack for four with a stun five with blood pact is, is very good so we're going to be taking this out this has got the fire this has actually got an additional target potentially on it you know it could potentially do target three you might want to spend the enhancement gold on getting an additional target on cauterize i think that would that's actually a legit enhancement but not one of the first ones i would i would recommend and certainly if you're playing the campaign you might struggle with money to do that and this has obviously got a higher attack value this does then kind of leave you in a bit of an awkward position when you're like well hang on up to now i've been doing blood pack cauterize as my first turn and blood pact devil horns doesn't work which it doesn't unless you have to start next to an enemy or something or or it, the enemies will come to you however i think it is absolutely fine to actually start with blood pact break the chains break the chains would then bring the enemies closer to you and hopefully position them with that pull effect and then you can use devil horns and hopefully target two or three things so i think that the um the argument here is that break the chains has a lot more synergy with what it is that we're doing and cauterize i think just starts to kind of like wane this is just better in, in most regards so we're gonna be getting rid of cauterize and we're bringing in devil horns Okay, on to level seven. Okay, so at level seven, we have Burning Hatred and we have Careless Charge. So Burning Hatred, attack three, target all adjacent enemies. Okay, we, we should be excited. That's definitely something we want to try and do with Blood Pact. And the fire is target all enemies up to two hexes away instead. So we can actually target even more things if we can consume fire. Yeah, this card is amazing the top of this is just an incredible attack it said this is like again a, a, an unstable upheaval this is unstable upheaval that you don't have to burn as a crack heart player this card makes me very excited so a lot of damage and yeah just just crazy fun the bottom of it is move three wound target all adjacent enemies i don't think you're going to be playing it for that very often however that is actually a quite a strong bottom as well so this card is uh, very versatile really really like it but the top of burning hatred is where it's at yeah this should get you very excited to just start annihilating entire rooms very very quickly the other card that we've got is careless charge which is move three attack four wound yourself 
and all adjacent allies to add, push to, and immobilize to the attack. Um, no. <laughs> um, I don't think this is very good at all. I think that this is a pretty, a pretty bad effect. It's interesting that it's been tried to balance here with this wound yourself and all adjacent allies. It seems like th that could be really bad. I mean, if you didn't have a healer who could do multiple small heals, like if you have the Tinker and rest Restorative Mist, for example, which can remove wound, you know, wounds on everybody, for example, by just moving next to them, th this could really hurt some of your um, some of your allies. You know, being wounded is annoying to deal with if you don't have a consistent source of small heals. So, uh, yeah. I think that the drawback is actually pretty big for your allies. Maybe not so much for you, but if you have Blood Pack going, you're then losing two health per turn. Very worth keeping an eye on. That's a huge amount of health to lose every single round. Just for an attack four, push and immobilize. So essentially what they're trying to say is, you know, use this against melee enemy to take them out of the fight for a round. What, and I have to take potentially several points of wound damage to my allies to do it? No, I, I, I really dislike the top of this card. It's interesting that it's a move. It can position you in certain ways. So, I mean, there are other things that, for example, it kind of gets around some of the other bad things. So, so for example, Unstoppable Destruction. It, it actually works quite well with this card because you can go Careless Charge, move, move three, attack four, wound yourself. You know, all of this stuff happens. And then you can play the bottom of Unstoppable Destruction to then just take a short rest next turn, which actually just is a long rest. So you heal the wound off right i think that that's generally what the kind of ideal sequence of of plays would be something like that or for example you could use the bottom of shiny destruction to make sure that you had an advantage on this attack or something like that but it, it's it's really quite situational and obviously we haven't taken unstoppable destruction so maybe for certain builds you could make it work but i think on balance it's pretty bad so uh yeah not interested in that the bottom is you are immune to all negative conditions which is interesting there are some negative conditions that are obviously very very bad so interestingly enough as well if you were to wound yourself so let's say you were to do the top of careless charge and then you were to do the bottom of unstable destruction you were to get back careless charge and then you were to then play the bottom you're immune you know you would never you would not get wounded essentially but the thing is you'd have to burn it to play it again yeah so it, it doesn't really work it's interesting that you kind of want the bottom of this card on a different card uh, i don't think it really works very well in tandem with this being immune to all negative conditions now there's only really a few negative conditions that you care about being immune to because most of the other ones you can you know you should be able to, you should be proactively dealing with them if they if you come across them so i mean the most annoying ones are obviously poison poison is very annoying because it blocks your heals wound annoying because it takes things down muddle it, it is annoying immobilize is also very annoying so those are probably i would say the four that you're like okay it would stop me from it would stop me from taking those things now there is an item protective charm which I'll put an image up on screen now for you the protective charm is essentially it makes you immune to wound and poison i think that there's better head items for this character but just to, just to put it out there there are items that can, can basically stop you from doing this which kind of really leaves only immobilizer muddle being the most annoying really for this character to deal with you do have some ranged attacks so if you do get immobilized you have some play that you can do I just don't think it's really worth it. The other two biggies are obviously Disarm and Stun. They're the biggies that you would be immune to. However, if an enemy is playing Disarm against you, I would highly recommend you kill that enemy as soon as you can. And usually Disarm and Stun effects, it's not often that they're very early. Um, there are a few enemies that can do Disarm, I believe, quite early. But often like Stun effects will be like they need to consume an element to do it or it's late. So... Yeah, I, I, I think that you can play around those two and actually stop that from happening very regularly. However, it's harder to play around Muddle, Immobilize, Poison, and, and Wound. So that's really what you're taking it for, in my opinion. Burning Hatred is an amazing card. So I, I even if you were to try and go all in on this style of build, which might be interesting for an experiment, I don't think it's uh, really where, where we're at. So Burning Hatred, amazing card. Just kill everything. Let's just Let's just go. Okay, so the card that we're actually going to be taking out is we're going to be taking out our Unbridled Power. So we're going to take out our last stun. So this is obviously a bit risky. You now don't have as many stuns. I actually think that if you're playing on 
really, really high difficulties of the game. Perhaps stun will be more valuable to you, but this is a consume fire effect and this is a consume fire effect. So we just need to make sure that we are, we're swapping them out basically just mainly for that. Also, because the attacks are going to be much, much better on burning hatred, hopefully. So yeah, it's a fairly like simple swap here. Losing the stun is a big deal. Again, if you are playing in two player, you may actually find that unbridled power will, will keep with you all the way up to level nine. You may actually find that more valuable because you're only playing in two player. You might only be facing against two, three enemies at a time, in which case burning hatred loses a bit of value versus like an attack force stun on an, on a dangerous elite, for example, I think could be much better. For me, I think I'm I'm, I'm happy to, to lose it here. Uh, we need to keep all of these other cards in, mainly for the initiative. So initiative is something you need to be very, like aware of with this character because obviously if you go late on low health and you're just out there chilling you could easily take an, a hit that will require you to burn a card because you you would die so early initiative is very important on this character so we're keeping bounce back resolute stand in purely for those reasons really yeah we're just going to be taking out unbridled power and bringing in burning hatred okay on to level eight so level eight we've got bone breaker and we've got vengeful barrage so Bone Breaker is an attack five. Wound, immobilize, make fire. Quite a nice little attack. Well, it's not little, it's quite big. <laughs> attack five plus blood pack, so it's an attack six. Wound and immobilize, make fire. Very simple effect. Nothing really to write at home about here. Just well costed. You know, good. Below that, we have attack three, range four. Target can no longer fly, which is an interesting effect. It can be quite good, uh, especially if you're dealing with traps and things like that. You can be like, boom. You, you no longer can fly. So traps can now come into play for pushes and pulls and things like that. So there are there is some sort of corner case use for it. I'm not convinced that it's really worth a level eight ability sort of card to take it. I said the top the top bone breaker is is decent. Like it is decent. It's it's nothing crazy, but it's decent. It's kind of weird that the immobilizer's on there because then you're gonna have to move away. So the idea would be that you would use bone breaker then move away. So Bone Breaker, uh, yeah, is, is just fine. Uh, Vengeful Barrage is on our next five sources of damage to us. We can perform an attack three action. So this is uh, kind of an interesting top because things like where we take damage for doing attacks. So say, for example, you were doing Dazing Wound, for example, that comes in, then you could essentially take the two damage and then you would actually get to, to do an attack three on top of your normal attack. Works with Blood Pact as well. So be an attack four. Actually, like... It's quite an interesting effect. Now, I don't know whether or not it's worth it at this point in time, but it's an interesting effect. Uh, we don't actually have that many of those cards left. We really just have Strength and Agony, which we mainly use for the bottom movement at this point in time. That's what you really where, where you're going to be using it. Um, so it, it does work with that, um, but we don't really have that many other kind of like abilities that do that now. We don't have that many like sacrifice abilities because Blood Pack is just going to keep ticking us down, ticking us down. We don't really care about being at below half health. We are just doing as much damage as we can with Blood Pack in play. We can't trigger this ourselves very often, but enemies could obviously trigger this uh, for us. So uh, I think it's kind of good. I'm not like a amazingly sold on it i think you need to like play uh, in a very particular way uh, in order to make it good uh, it's a burn as well so you know again you have to be a little bit careful with these kind of burn effects but the bottom of this card is move four consume fire to add plus one attack to all of our attacks this round, which is actually is yes brilliant love it thank you very much where do I sign up? <laughs> so being able to just add another plus one attack, oh, suddenly all of our attacks become much, much better, right? I mean, really, this is this is just you know me being very excited to play this with a card like Flurry of Axes. You know, once you get to level eight or nine in Gloomhaven is when you start doing your real bust, you know, sometimes even earlier, but you start just, you know, the characters become busted in many ways. Pretty much all of the characters, aside from a few, that they will get cards that are just like, whoa, you can do crazy, crazy stuff with this. So obviously doing Flurry of Axes with this is just, ah, oh, exactly what you want to be able to do. Unfortunately, we can't use Burning Hatred unless obviously we're just attacking all adjacent enemies because we can't double consume fire which kind of sucks. I think Vengeful Barrage Bottom is really useful as well. For example, break the chains and stuff like that, you know, just to get ourselves some extra, extra damage. Suddenly we're attacking for four on uh, two targets. So Vengeful Barrage, I think Bottom is really useful. Um, and the top is situationally good to play when, uh, when we want to, if we jump in or something like that. So yeah, I think uh, on balance, Vengeful Barrage is where we're at. 
So the card we're going to be getting rid of now is again, this is starting to get a bit awkward. Every card that we're playing is is really good. And this is obviously a slightly different effect. Like this is basically a movement effect. So we should be looking to swap out some kind of movement card for it. Now, I could absolutely see a reason to just get rid of Resolute Stand at this point in time. You may have even gotten rid of it earlier because your hit point is probably not going that low and the move to retaliate one is really incidental but i think that the nine initiative is just it's worth having around a lot of the time so the card i think i will be getting rid of is strength and agony now this does mean that we lose quite a bit of movement um so you may find that for example using something like flurry of axes might be more difficult well, hopefully at this point in time you're level eight you've got access to better boots you're not just using boots of striding which is just plus two perhaps you have like plus four boots now at this point in time the only other thing that is a little bit of a concern is that i would often recommend that you enhance jump onto the bottom of strength and agony which then means you would be losing your jump effect we'll get into that when we get more into enhancements so you do need to think about this a little bit more personally i do value having the early initiatives just the early initiatives just make your turn just like so much simpler you know the game just becomes a lot easier to play because you just know i'm going to be going before the enemy so you're not in that weird situation when oh that thing moved that i was going to go and attack or this that and the other you can really plan your turns you do have to be careful obviously we're taking focus so your positioning becomes very important but i, I think on balance we're going to get rid of strength and agony here and we're going to bring in vengeful barrage again you may your mileage may vary on this so you might actually consider that actually i actually prefer to get rid of resolute stand here instead which i think would be absolutely fine i think out of the two bounce back and resolute stand bounce back is 100 percent the one that you want to keep and that's just because one the extra movement but also that heal oneself is actually quite nice for clearing things like poison um as well all right on to level nine so at level nine we have immortality and we have the more of madness so immortality immortality says on the next five sources of damage to you we suffer no damage instead pretty nice right not taking any damage for five sources of damage um this is bad <laughs> this is bad um for a few reasons so first reason is we're playing blood pact which is a source of damage so this would trigger on blood pact you know obviously something like immortality you really want it to trigger on you know some sort of crazy times two damage attack that the enemy does against you and go great it saved me from taking 10 damage or something uh, the likelihood is though is that the charges of immortality are going to be eaten up by blood pact which is just not really where, where you're at and where you want to be so i think that the top of this is quite bad i think even if you were playing a tanking character i think that the top of this is quite bad because um it's very all in and you could quite easily walk into a room with you know five six enemies and just immortality is burned in a single turn and that's just not what you want just being completely burned out like I, basically to negate damage for a round is i don't think very good value for a burn so not something that we really want uh the bottom is move to shield to self and then we can spend fire to retaliate to self so the bomb is actually pretty is, is a serviceable tanking card move to shield to excellent retaliate to self works very well if you're playing the top of spiked armor as well um obviously because this would increase the value up to four so actually, I think Immortality as a tanking only card, the top is mediocre, the bottom is good, which kind of means that you could probably play the bottom for most of the scenario, and then you can play the top like towards the end, maybe just to finish it out, just when you need to get over the line. But really, as a tank, you're going to be wanting to do a lot of retaliate damage too. It's like you're, you're kind of giving up, you're giving up doing damage yourself because you're going to be using the retaliate to do the damage, right? You're kind of like switching your damage source from doing attacks to doing retaliate damage. So that's immortality anyway. And the other card is the more of madness, which is attack three, target all adjacent enemies, muddle. It's pretty strong, quite nice. Perform a heal to self action for each enemy damaged. Now that should have you quite excited. You know, we're now not playing a build where any of our cards require us to be below half so we don't have any cards at all on us so heals are just good in all instances there's never an instance when a heal is bad for us at this point in time the weird thing is as well is that it's kind of quite good on the tank because tank is going to be in the middle most likely and there's going to be lots of enemies around them so the tank is going to quite often find themselves in a situation when the top of more of madness is good for them because they're going to be able to heal it's a bit of a, bit of a weird bit of a weird kind of juxtaposition there between these two because i actually think that the top of this is much stronger for tanking than the top of this but anyway we absolutely love the top of this 
combos very well with blood packs uh, and we get to the heal as well so we can kind of negate several rounds of blood pack damage potentially so yeah really like it the bottom is that we may suffer up to five damage and then we can do attack of three plus x so up to five so that's up to eight damage to range three immobilize where x is the amount of damage you suffer this is just yeah so basically we can do an attack of eight with blood pack nine at range three and immobilize something Yes, we take five damage. It's pretty bad, but that is really good. Really good. Just taking five damage to do that. I mean, you're not necessarily always going to take the five. So there's that. I also think that the top of this is obviously very strong. It's what's awesome, awesome about this as well is that you can just suffer a load of damage through the bottom and then just maybe like damage a potion or whatever, get the more of madness back and then just do the top to heal it all back up again. Lovely. Yeah, I think the more of madness is um, is a very strong card. 10 initiative as well. We need to talk about that because the 10 initiative is, is very good as well. So we're very excited that we've got a nice early initiative now. So we're like, yay, we can actually maybe get rid of some of the cards that we've been keeping purely for the initiative instead right there is uh, there is that so we're taking the more of madness here okay so you got a couple of choices for the card that you may want to to get rid of here i think it'd be absolutely fine at this point in time to take out resolute stand i think that um it, on balance you're probably not going to be using the top very much i mean yes it can be a very big attack but i don't think you're you're engineering your health to be like that you're now quite an easy character to manage in terms of health because you're just taking one damage a turn from blood pact and you're going to be able to heal yourself up with like the more of madness for example and you can have your own health potions and things like that so you're not a difficult character to manage health anymore if you did enhance resolute stand with strengthen on the bottom then that is you know a, a fairly sizable loss so you might actually instead consider getting rid of uh spike dharma i think that that would be that would be fine getting rid of that instead you know or potentially you might be able to get rid of fatal fury depending on on, on how you like to play but i would i would suggest that the probably the right play here would be to get rid of resolute stand if you haven't enhanced it I would recommend that you do your strength enhancement on bounce back because you're going to keep that forever. So we're actually going to drop resolute stand here and we're going to pick up the more of madness. Okay, so there we go. That is us at level nine with all of our cards. As you can see, in my opinion, this character sort of from level five onwards becomes a little bit less fun decision space for the cards. You'll notice that most of the kind of cards that we picked up don't really build on the level one kind of strategy themes the themes of taking damage to do something or you know having our health below half there isn't really much that builds upon that there are some obviously here that we that we just didn't take and that that were possible things that we could have used to kind of keep that theme that theme going however i think that this is just a very very strong build you know you just want to take damage really so this kind of just really encourages you to just just go all out on just taking the highest damage potential cards and just using blood packs all the way through to level nine so i will put an image up now of all of our level nine cards so you can see them if you're playing the tabletop version and you would like a nice sort of like freeze frame of just being able to to see all of the cards okay so let's talk about perks so for perks the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to be wanting to remove your two minus ones uh the only thing you might want to do differently is you may want to get resilient so the timing for when you pick up resilient you're uh, ignoring negative item effects it's going to vary wildly on what items that you want to pick up we will talk a little bit about items obviously later on personally i don't usually go armor with this character in digital at least because i find that I'd much rather just have like a tanking character and I'd actually much rather go with something like an invisibility cape, which allows us to just kind of play very aggressive and then go invisible when we need to, to just keep ourselves out of trouble. So, uh, so actually we're going to be getting consistency here. Then we're going to be doing focus to replace our minus ones with our plus ones. So now you're in a sort of situation where you've got a couple of things that you can do. Uh, you could dust here. I don't think dusting here would be terrible, but also like dusting is inherently a little bit awkward uh, unless you have your strength and enhancement. Sometimes you don't want to go with, with dust too early. So if you have no way of gaining regular advantage, I don't think you want to necessarily go dust. What we're actually going to do is we're going to go down here and we're going to take cinder, which is the plus twos. So we're going to do a little bit of that. Probably do that twice. 
then I think probably now that we've, uh, you know, we're up a little bit, we've sort of spent some bucks, we're up a few levels, we can now kind of comfortably use dust. Hopefully we've enhanced our strengthen. And now, to be honest, it's sort of down to a few of your sort of like personal preferences. You know, in digital, you don't have to take any additional uh, modifiers if you don't want. Um, so subdue is very good. Adding a plus one and a disarm, I think that's that's actually very strong. Sort of helps to replace some of that stun effect that you've lost. Uh, bludgeon is also pretty good. A rolling stun is very good. Also, replacing these with rolling plus twos is obviously going to mean that your damage is going to do a lot. So I like these as well. Uh, I think it's kind of up to you. If you're playing tabletop and you have to take perks, then I would guess that probably the rolling stuns are probably the best things for you to get at this point in time. That would be my kind of rough feeling. Um, obviously, this allows you to do damage more often. Depends on how regularly you're playing with advantage, really. But I think that, that you can kind of choose whichever you prefer really from these i think you you definitely want to do the plus one disarm first and then you know you can either do either of these two maybe mix them up in terms of like other things that you want i don't think you really care about recover especially considering that that's you know you're going to have quite a lot of health and this particular build doesn't sacrifice loads and loads of health i don't think recover is is needed bloodletting is is interesting Certainly, it will allow you to do a lot more wounds because you're going to be targeting a lot of enemies. So bloodletting is actually pretty good and obviously resilient if you're going to go down that route with any of the items that that would uh, that would give you negative um, would give you negative modifiers. So let's just go for like bloodletting. I think that this is maybe resilient. I think this is probably roughly where you're going to be where you're going to end up. Okay, let's take a little look at items. So four items for this character, there are quite a lot of items that aren't actually in digital quite yet that this character will definitely like. And uh, yeah, when they are added, then you can obviously recommend them. I will use the images for some of them uh, as we come across them. Uh, also, if you're playing tabletop, obviously this is something you get. There will be potential spoilers here because these will be prosperity items. But, you know, I think it's fine for you to see that these items exist, so that you know what's coming. So uh, for your head item for digital, I've been using the Mask of Terror mainly because that's really the only great option we have right now. And I actually think it's been working fairly well. So if you do have Mask of Terror and you do seem to struggle with retaliate enemies because you just keep getting beaten up, then actually I think the Mask of Terror has got some good corner case use. So it's good not great the other items that i'll put an image up now is you definitely want to think about a necklace of teeth which is an item that allows you to heal every time that you kill an enemy very useful for you because you're going to be doing so much damage you're definitely going to be killing a lot of stuff so uh you're definitely going to get a lot of heal out of that and helps offset that uh blood pact um damage that you are taking absolutely um you could consider using iron helm you know so that you don't uh take that times two whenever it gets drawn against you again it's not something that's massively required but it's a cheap thing that you can get very early on i don't mind the use of, a, of an item like hawk helm early on either because it helps to extend the range of both break the chains and cauterize which is very good but it is kind of like it's a bit of a waste of gold i think for your character um to begin with but if you're very very flush and you're just looking for a, a head slot item and you don't have access to anything else i don't think it's a terrible one you definitely want to stay away from from goggles goggles are just not something that your character needs you should probably have some um some ranged kind of aoe damage dealers in your party that probably want them over you anyway seeing as you only have two and to be honest the only attack that you do really want to use eagle eye goggles on is going to be you know flurry of axes once you get to level four like everything below before level four you don't really need eagle eye goggles for like i said we're going to be going into enhancements and we're going to be strengthening ourselves regularly to make sure that we have strength for those big attacks so I don't necessarily think that you need it. You can also use Horned Helm. That's a very good item for your character because you do run around quite a lot. And you have quite a decent amount of movement. So I think that's also a decent head slot item for you. For your body item, you can, if you want to go for the ignore negative item, you know, perk, go for like decent armor. So just going for shielding and things like that gives you a lot of sustain, allows you to not have to worry so much about your positioning. Personally, in the early levels, I absolutely love Cloak of Invisibility. I think it's great because you have a lot of movement. It, you're quite often a character who likes to uh, open doors. So I think having Cloak of Invisibility on a character that opens doors is always very good. Uh... I think for you, really, uh, you can either go for some kind of armor item or go for a, 
a cloak. So for hand items, uh, long spear is an excellent item to pick up, especially um, in the early levels um, when you're going to be doing a lot of single target attacks with stuff like Defiance of Death, being able to turn it into a two-person attack is very good. Also works very, very well with Resolute Stand or Glass Hammer because you basically do the attack twice. So you can like double up on the XP gain that you can get. That's a way that you can level this character crazy, crazy uh, fast if you want to. So absolutely Long Spear is incredibly good on this character. Items like Reaping Scythe, again, very, very good thing with reaping scythe though is that it is a burn versus uh, long spear so i think i actually like long spear more than i like reaping scythe even though the reaping scythe has more damage potential the fact that you can refresh long spear i think i, I prefer that also items that aren't yet in the game you've got halberd as well which is another item that could be very good and actually allows you to uh it gives you a lot of um, flexibility actually in the um the early parts of the game for your leg item i mean early game you're just going to want boots of striding nothing fancy you may consider actually getting uh jump boots instead if you find that you are struggling without having jump in the early parts of the game like i said you can enhance strength and agony to put jump on it i think that's a very good enhancement to do uh, but yeah, Boots of Striding, I think, is is absolutely fine early in the game. Uh, ultimately, you're probably going to be trying to get towards Rocket Boots. Like, these boots are amazing. I mean, it goes without saying, really. Um, but for you in particular, they are very, very good because you're just that jump is just going to be so valuable to you. So Rocket Boots, if you can get them, yeah, you you absolutely love it. For small items, obviously, healing potions are absolutely what you need. You need a minor healing potion um, at level one, I would say prioritize a minor healing potion over any other potion at level one then you're going to be wanting to get obviously the better health potions i mean to be honest once you start getting up a few levels then you know they definitely start to wear off like their use for you because you're no longer relying on ticking yourself down and you're not using dazing wound all the time you actually don't hurt yourself as much healing potions kind of phase out towards the the later levels you don't need them quite as much you don't need to rely on them quite as much still very useful though so then you're probably going to be looking at making sure that you have like stamina potions as always power potions very good because you, you have lots of multi-target attacks now so power potions definitely start to rise in your uh in your rankings uh, also any of the earrings it goes without saying that any of the earrings are quite good on this character especially good if you have something like a long spear and actually end up going with armor instead of something like a cloak of invisibility because starring will allow you to refresh the charges on those items okay let's take a look at enhancements so for enhancements the number one slam dunk enhancement you really want is you want to get strengthened on the bottom of bounce back this is absolutely what you want to do for 50 gold it is the best 50 gold you will ever spend on this character trust me so just get this this will allow you to have strengthen not only on the turn that you play it but also on the the next turn as well so that will allow you to then play like some sort of like crazy uh crazy attacks both an attack top and an attack bottom next turn so you can essentially get the strength effect across three um kind of attack actions potentially with this character so very strong so we're definitely going to take that after that i mean you could also do it on resolute stand if you really really want to i don't think it's necessarily a bad thing to do it there either i think uh yeah either of the two especially early is very good depends on how much gold you have in guildmaster mode you're going to be flush so perhaps uh you can afford it but maybe in uh if you're playing in the tabletop campaign you probably only have enough gold to maybe do one or two enhancements so i don't think you really want to do much more than that so bounce back is what you've got there then the next sort of like good quality of life one to do early is going to be putting jump on the bottom of here it costs you 50 gold and uh yeah, it just makes your life so much easier to make sure that you can get into the positions that you need to get in especially once you pick up flurry of axes so at level four in particular this enhancement is very good because then suddenly you can get yourself into the perfect position to do a big flurry of axes so definitely something that you want to do now in terms of other enhancements that you can do i mean you could you know chuck an extra target on cauterize it's very expensive for an extra 100 gold but i think that's very good like early game similar with break the chains put another target on this costs a little bit more because it's a level two card so there are definitely certain things you can do but i would suggest that realistically you know what a realistic expectation of what a player could afford in the campaign would be 
a, a strengthen on the bottom of bounce back and potentially jump on uh, on strength and agony and that's probably all you're going to uh, end up being able to afford obviously there's some really crazy things you can do late levels so you can look at uh, you know upgrading something like devil horns with the extra hex i mean costs a lot but yeah it's pretty pretty good obviously you could do something stupid like put disarm on burning hatred if if you want to have absolutely no fun then i would suggest doing that because it would just make the game far too easy for you uh yeah so there's lots of uh there's lots of other little things you do bottom of spike dharma for example you can even put you can even put disarm on the bottom of that for even cheaper which is pretty cheesy but but yeah, very viable. So yeah, there's lots of uh, silly things you can do with this character once you have a lot of gold and you want to enhance. Okay, so there we have the guide, guys. I hope you really enjoyed the video. If you do, toss it a like and consider subscribing if you're not already. If you would like to catch me live, you can catch me at twitch.tv slash mandatory quests where I stream every Monday, Wednesday and Sunday. Typically Gloomhaven, sometimes some other things too. But yeah, it's always a good time. So come and hang out and chill and uh, talk Gloomhaven with me there. Okay, guys, well, then all that's left for me to say is thank you again so much for watching. I will catch you in the next one. Bye. Well, I think so. Yeah. Oh, 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 That's the blessing. <laughs> <from Jeff. laughs> <laughs> yeah. so, uh, Isaac, at this point, can we uh, get your approval to add an additional attack modifier deck <laughs> for allies in the digital version? <laughs>